Another characteristic of life is the idea that all life must grow and develop. Now, even unicellular organisms like uh, represented by this circle that you see over here, just a simple cell, will actually grow through its life cycle. A cell will start small and then it will grow up and eventually it can no longer withstand its size. Because the thing is, as you can see here, uh, up here, that the volume it will increase uh, faster than the surface area will increase. And we'll learn more about this when we talk about cell division later in the year. But what this means is that eventually the cell becomes inefficient at dealing with the transfer of materials in and out of the cell and it can't sustain its own size and so at that point it must split up and then this stuff, stuff happens over here and the cell will divide its genetic material in half and divide its cell in half and the cell will replicate. So when you're talking about growth you're talking about two things you're talking about an increase in cell size as well as an increase in cell number. For example when you see here this um, this elephant, you will see that it has a really bigger size than the puppy elephant that is over here. So the, the elephant uh, that was just born, what is the difference between this elephant and that elephant in terms of cells? Well, it's not really the cell size. It's not that, that the cells in this elephant are larger. Because remember, I've just talked about, there's a limit to how big the cells can get because it gets to a point that they can no longer efficiently do their job. So the difference between the mama elephant and the, and the puppy elephant is that it has more cells. So even this mice and the elephant, you know, elephants are scared of mice. The difference is not so much in the size of cells, but in the number of cells. You would expect the elephant to have millions and billions of times more cells than the rat actually had. So when you're talking about growth, which is what life must do to uh, doing its processes, it has to increase the cell size, yes. But as the cells become too large, they must replicate. And so as you grow up, you don't just grow each cell a little bit. You also grow your number of cells. Okay? It's a very important concept. That means, though, that unicellular organisms, of course, will never uh, increase the number of cells. Because they, when they do this copy process, they just make more copies of themselves and restart the cycle. So when you talk about unicellular organisms, all they do is grow in cell size. But all multicellular organisms will grow by increasing their cell size until they can only do it and then they will increase the cell numbers. And really what makes you larger is not your cells getting larger, it's just you getting more cells. So when you grow up during puberty, it's, it's that you're making multiple copies of your cells. But that's growth. How about development? Development is when a cell changes. So look at here, for example, that the frog that starts as an egg, changes to a tadpole, metamorphizes into a, a young frog, and then an adult frog, which then lays the eggs and restarts the cycle. Or a butterfly, which starts as an egg, changes to a larva, changes to a pulpa, that changes into an adult and completely changes its shape in each of the steps. What about you? that has so many different kinds of cells. You have so much tissue. You have bone cells, skin cells, nervous cells, liver cells, pancreas cells, muscle cells, heart cells. Uh, you have blood cells. You have all kinds of cells. Where are all these different kinds of cells coming from? You see here on the left side uh, that uh, embryo is developing and from one cell it splits into be until it finally becomes a uh, sea star. But at what point this blob of cells starts becoming a sea star? Well, that happens when something called differentiation happens. Now, differentiation is the process by which cells of one type change to become different types uh, in multicellular organisms. Remember, I talked about, we talked about cells, that what makes a multicellular organism multicellular is not that he has many cells, but that he has many types of cells. And that's the thing about us. We have several different types of tissue, as you can see in the screen here. But all of those types of tissue came from the same original egg that, that combined with a sperm to make that zygote. And from that zygote, a blob of cells came in. And from that blob of cells, the cells, each one of those cells, which are called stem cells, the embryonic cells, the cells that have the potential to become any kind of cell, each one of them changed into different kinds of cells in a process that's called cell change or differentiation. Now, the, the interesting thing about this is that any one cell in your body has the same DNA code. All the cells are essentially identical in the instruction. It's almost like a library, you know? All the cells have inside of it the same library. But the difference between the cells is which part of the library is active, which book is open. So all the cells in your body will have exactly the same DNA. But some cells will be reading chapter 1, some cells will be reading chapter 2, some cells will be reading chapter 3. Depending in which 
part of the DNA code is being read, the cell will have certain things active and it will act different because of it and it may even look different because of it. It's just like we know when you grow up, you specialize, maybe you become more of a sport player or maybe more of a science guy or maybe more of a math guy or a history guy. Depending on what you focus on, you're going to change into, into that kind of a person. The same thing here. Depending, you may have all the information available on the web for you, but depending on what page you have open, that's what you're going to have your attention to get towards and that's what you're going to be doing. You know, you're not going to be watching a video on Instagram. You're not going to be, you know, uh, listening to a song on, on, a, on Wikipedia. You're going to be doing that on Pandora maybe. So depending on which page is active, you're going to be acting different. And that's the concept of what makes cells different from each other. And that's development. Development is as we go through life and activate different parts of our DNA because of what the environment says us, tells us to do, what our genes tell us to do, our cells will change. And that's why the tadpole becomes a metamorph, which becomes a frog, and why the, the egg becomes a larva, which becomes a pulp, because it becomes an adult. Because at different stages of the life of those animals, different parts of their cells, of their DNA, was becoming activated, which were changing the composition of that animal. Because ultimately, all that animal is, is the cells they're made of. But if the cells are changing, then you're changing the organism. And as you grow up as a human being, you also underwent such changes. And that's called development. You know, And that's why we go through life and change and grow. That's life and one of the characteristics of it.